Wolf Quest, Issue 3, The Challenge. Surviving a cruel three-day journey through the scorching desert sands, the wolf riders come upon a wondrous elven village flourishing in the midst of the wilderness. Welcome to Sorrow's End. Sorrow's End? Keta, that's what you named this place. How? You are elves indeed, brave travelers. Our race is of one heart and one mind, no matter the circumstances which shape our behavior, or our bodies. She is tall, this regal elf woman. Tall and beautiful beyond compare. <sighs> the wolf riders shrink from her in superstitious awe. For only in their oldest legends have they known of such a being. High one? Are you one of the high ones? <laughs> no, child. You flatter me. Old I may be, but not that old. I am Saba of the Sunfolk, some of whom are pleased to call me Mother of Memory. Do not be afraid. Have you never seen an aged elf before? Ah, no. I see that even the eldest among you is but a stripling. Well now. And you? What is it they call you? Cutter? A fine name for a fighting cockerel. Dear me, there's even a crest here to complete the image. My heart rejoices that you are here at last. Long have I believed that other children of the High Ones still dwelled in the lands beyond the desert. You come from that green growing place, which is legend to all but myself. You see, I am old enough to remember a time before the village. A time when my family crossed the burning waste, just as you have done, to settle here in the oasis we named Sorrow's End. Did the humans chase you away from your hole too? Humans? The word seems to strike her, like a sharp blow. This harsh world has wrought many changes in our kind. Countless years have passed since I was as young and resilient as you, wolf riders. But I remember, oh yes, I remember the humans. And still they fear us, after all this time. What a pity. Well, you are safe now. At any rate, my woodland cousins, there are no humans here. <laughs> that night, a grand celebration is held to welcome Cutter and his tribe. Never have these shy wood elves experienced such boisterous gaiety or such generous hospitality. Merry laughter and rollicksome music echo from the hillsides as the wolf riders take in every sight, scent, and sound with wide-eyed wonder. But not all eyes reflect the gladness of celebration. Rayek has long been chief hunter of the Sunfolk. Not for him is the tilling of the soil or the placid domesticity of village life. He is thrilled in the use of powers long forgotten by most of his people, and he has reveled in the village's dependence on him during times of poor harvest. But now, another hunter has come, a strong one, with a fierce band of followers at his side. And worst of all, <laughs> this upstart has dared to recognize Lita for his own. Lita, daughter of the blind sun toucher. Lita, the uh -huh. only maiden who understands the old powers as Rayak does. No. Rayak bears no welcome for the wolf riders and none especially for their bold young chieftain. So begins the merging of two very different tribes. In the days that follow, the wolves adapt easily to their new environment, shedding much of their thick fur, and taking delight in the variety of fresh new game to be found. But while the wolf pack quickly makes itself at home in the mountains, the wolf riders are slow to give up their old habits of secrecy and solitude. You have opened your houses to us, and we thank you, but these caves will serve us well enough. And you wish, Rankata, but did not hide from the sun forever. We 
Doc, come with me. I'm taking these blankets to the wolf children. Those dark, cheerless caves must be so cold at night. You go, Shen Shen. I don't want to. Because of Kata? Really, sister. Must you be so unforgiving? He may have frightened you, but he didn't do any harm. And he did apologize. You ought to be more friendly. Shen Shen, you are a fool to encourage her. Lita would do well to avoid those barbarians altogether, especially Kata. Well, by the midday fumes, Rayek grows more ill-mannered every day. The strangers make him nervous, that's all. Pooh, he's needed a good taking down for some time. And son bless me, I think Kata may be the one to do it. Unaware of Shen Shen's mischievous notion, Rayek hunts, alone as always. He has never needed anyone's help. His method is simple. The effect inescapable. Calmly, my bristling friend. You will not feel this. You do your prey no honor to take the fight out of it like that. Huh? What do you know of honor? You are more beast than hell. Is it an honor for animals to die in terror and pain? My way spares them that suffering. Oh. Is that how you plan to get Lita? Stay away from her, barbarian. I warn you, do not cross me. Or you will stand no more chance than this! But Rayek's stern threat has no effect on the smitten wolfrider. Cutter hasn't eaten for two days. He thinks of nothing but Lita. Uh-huh. Sometimes it happens like that. There's no telling when or the way. Somehow an outfit lad and a maiden recognize each other and bang! It speaks. There's nothing either one of them can do but accept it for the cult. You're sure of it? She's the one? Yes. I knew it the moment I saw her, and so did she. Leah. She knows my soul name, Skywise. I'd stake my life on it. Then you should talk to her. I will. Tomorrow. Leah. Many days have passed without a word between us. Why do you deny the truth we both know? Truth? What truth? I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. In my tribe, we don't play games with our hearts. We know. We huh? <laughs> what is it? What is it, Sava? A challenge wand. I have not seen one in many, many eights of years. When all involved are before me, I shall tell you what it means. Sava's summons is quickly obeyed. Cutter sees that even the venerable Sun Toucher, he that interprets the Daystar's every motion, is humble in the presence of the Mother of Memory. Although she knows nothing of the ancient ritual to come, Lita senses that, for good or ill, her long and tranquil life must soon change. Children of my children's children, Hear now a chant that is older than old, and truer than truth itself. Heart to heart are life mates bound. Soul meets soul when eyes meet eyes. Maiden, amongst those gathered round, stands your one love recognized? Speak his name, and all is done. Twixt these two you must decide. Nay to both, or I to one. Which of them must step aside? Say what is in your heart, daughter. We will all abide by your decision. Lita turns first to Rayek, her lifelong friend whose magic powers are surpassed by none save Sava, and whose restless, brooding nature is as compelling as an intricate puzzle. Then, slowly, almost against her will, Lita's eyes are drawn to Cutter's. He is Freyak's opposite in every respect. Artless, frank-hearted, wild as a beast of prey. And yet, soul meets soul when eyes meet eyes? Great son, it, it can't be him. That savage? No, I'd rather be a life mate to his wolf than to Cutter. 
For long moments, Lita agonizes in silence. Then, in truth, I... I can neither choose nor refuse either one. Poor child. Recognition is not always easy. She needs more time. If the maiden's heart is open to both who seek her love, then the trial may determine which suitor she'll approve. Cutter, Chief of the Wolf Riders, Brayek has challenged you to the trial of head, hand, and heart. He that takes victory in each of three contests shall win the undisputed right to court Lita. Strength, wits, and courage, Wolf. Three out of three. You cannot defeat me. Lita will be mine once and for all. Brayek! Do you know less of courtesy than this barbarian does? This is no child's game of toss stone, and I am not some trinket to be handed out as a prize. The only thing this trial will solve is your foolish rivalry, not my preference. Peace. Let the wolf rider speak. Does he accept the challenge? A single nod, more eloquent than any boast of prowess, is Cutter's only reply. Then let the rivals prepare. The trial begins at sunrise. Remember, Rayek, this contest must be fair. Do not be tempted to use your magic against Cutter. I will not need to, mother of memory. Dawn. To the Sunfolk, the first light of day is a thing to be glorified. Great events must take place in the golden mists of morning, when the sun looks most kindly upon the wakening face of the world. The wolf rider thinks to take my place, but he shall not, I swear it. I don't see the need for these contests, but I'll do as Lita wants. I could stop this with a single word. Why am I so determined to see it through? Does they bring about many changes? I pray they will be for the best. Here, where the lodestone for luck, they led us away from the fixed star. Away from our old life to here. Maybe it will guide you now. <laughs> Thanks, Skyless. Kind of a win. He has to. Lita recognized him. Everyone knows it. Everyone but Lita. The trial of hand begins. A test of strength, balance, and agility. Blindfolded to prevent the use of hidden powers, neither combatant sees the twin poles on which he knows he must perch, or the grooved cylinders which will cause those poles to tilt crazily as it rolls about. One fall loses all. Ready yourselves. Begin! Oh. Good luck, Black Cat. <laughs> all right, Exide? Nope, just sympathetic. Cutter will beat the living bear fat out of him. Oh. Give up, flea scratcher. No one can best me in this game. Ha! <laughs> this is easier than walking a tree branch in a light breeze. You were saying, Kerr? Whoops. Bead rattler. Bone polisher. Snake. Dog. <laughs> no. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! What did I tell you? He's on bear plus sun, sure as birds fly. And Rayek's chewing nettles now, sure as snakes crawl. Well, my kidling, Rayek has lost his solitary claim on you. Perhaps the wolf Mother, rider. Physical strength is but a trifle. Surely the barbarian will fail the test of wits. Look. No, you can't have it. Get away. Salva, you can't have anything I own but this. Not New Moon, not my father's sword. Tradition demands that both opponents must give over their weapons. They will be hidden deep and well in secret caverns in the mountains. He that regains his weapon and returns here first, by use of his wits, shall be the victor. Go on, Cutter. Luck is with you today. I know it. Very reluctantly. Cutter places his precious sword in Sava's hand. Well, you can make me do this, Lita, but I still don't see why you must. Once again, Rayek and Cutter are blindfolded, but this time their hands are bound as well. Easy, Night Runner. He'll be all right. It's all part of the test. Completely disoriented. Cutter can only hope for the best as he is led along an unknown path. To an unknown place. I'm getting sick of blindfolds. And take it off if you can free your hands. We'll come back. 
and finally we can show up and love the sunset. Thanks. In another part of the maze-like caverns, Rayek is already hard at work. Ah, this jutting rock should do the trick. Cutter, however, relies on his forest-born dexterity. <clears throat> I've sworn free of strangleweed before. This isn't so different. Now where'd they hide New Moon? As Cutter wanders through the cool darkness of the caves, his heightened senses serve him well. Keen night vision pierces through the gloom. And a nose so sensitive that it can distinguish one alloy from another detects the faint scent of bright metal. Only New Moon is forged with that light troll made stuff. Meanwhile, Rick's tracking ability has shown him the subtlest of clues. Those who came before to hide my dagger left footmarks so light that only I could detect them. The barbarian will lose this trial. But even so, I've no time to waste. Equally aware that time is slipping by, Cutter scrambles through a high passageway. New moon is down there. Somewhere. Well, either I jump and risk a broken neck, or use my wits. From the strong leather lacings in his deerskin breeches, Cutter fashions a length of rope. A loose stone serves to anchor the makeshift line within a small crack in the ledge. Hopeless holes. Oh, well, not long enough. That's no bed of flowers down there. Oh, well. <clears throat> After a search equally as bruising as Cutter's. A gleam of gold. There, in the small fissure, my dagger. But <clears throat> it is beyond my arm's reach. Cleverly done, my people. The hilt, upright, cannot be snared. How simple it would be to levitate the dagger. But Sava would know, and Cutter would win by default. There must be another way, if only my grasp were longer. What's wrong? I must be right on top of... <coughs> New Moon! The joy of discovery quickly fades, for all of Cutter's efforts to reach his weapon end in frustration. Can't grab it. Can't fish it out. Come on, Tam, you fool! Think. What? Something tugging at my neck. The lodestone. The lodestone. That will only work for Skywise. At the same time, this sliver of clear stone will hold the teeth apart. It should work as well as magic. Carefully, with infinite patience, Briac lowers his ingenious grasping tool toward his golden dagger. Gently. Ah! <laughs> I'd like to see the Wolf Rider figure this out. Rayek emerges to welcome afternoon sunlight, certain of his triumph. What matters the loss of one paltry trial of hand? Lita knows that wit is better than strength. She will choose me. But the elated hunter's return to his village is marred by an unpleasant surprise. What kept you, oh mighty slayer of toads? Cutter's been back a good while. And when Rhea <laughs> learns the manner in which Cutter retrieved his sword. Cheat! Deceiver! What proof of wit is it to use a magic stone? I could have used my powers, but I did not. Cutter used no magic, Rayak. He thought to use a stone only as a good luck talisman. That its natural power to adhere to metal would work for him was Cutter's accidental discovery. Frustrated beyond anger, Rayek turns to... Lita? It, it is not fair. I... Oh, Rayek, my dear friend, I know you are wiser than the Wolf Rider, but he returned first, and Sava has ruled him the winner. It is not over yet. I still have one chance left to defeat him. Things are not as simple here as they were in the forest, are they, little cousin? We come now to the trial of heart, the last and most difficult test of all. For either of you to win, you must overcome your greatest fear. Then the contest is ended! My greatest fear is for the safety of my tribe. I would not change that if I could. How little you know yourself! Buried deep in your mind are fears that you never imagined were yours. It is from those that I shall select the appropriate test for each of you. 
Sava places her warm, dry fingertips against Cutter's sweating brow. He is aware that she walks quietly in the shadowed tunnels of his mind, searching for... She has found it, and Cutter is chilled by a sudden, nameless dread. She knows. Rayek's deepest thoughts, too, are probed in the same manner. Uh He, too, is left shaken and dazed when the Mother of Memory completes her search. For Cutter's trial, we must go where the carrion birds nest, and where the wind moans sadly, like a beast in pain. To the bridge of destiny, where others in the past have tried to prove their courage. Tried, and failed. Now Cutter, you must walk to the sun symbol on the far side. Touch it, and return, all without aid. That should be easy for you, Cutter. Why, I've seen you walk a tree branch no wider than this without stirring a leap. But it was never so far to fall, Skywise. Never so far to fall. Give it a try, lad. She's worth it, isn't she? Gingerly, Cutter places one shuddering foot on the slender bridge. A step is taken, another, and another, and then Cutter looks down. No! He's losing his balance! Cutter, turn back, we'll help you. Here, you're safe now. Can't do it. My heart's beating like a rabbit's. Too high, too high, too high. This is a stupid test. I wouldn't do it for anything. Yeah, if I... Leah, if I die for you, what would be the sense? Don't apologize. You tried. What more should she expect? Father, this is not right. Were you hoping that cut at humiliation would suit the indignity of your first meeting? These wolf riders will not turn on one of their own. So, the fierce wolf cowers like a frightened squirm. Look, Lena, what do you think now of your wild barbarian suitor? Your choice of a life date has become easier. Rayek, what are you doing? Aha! And if a stroll across the bridge of destiny was something to be feared. See, Lena, it is nothing. He is a coward to the very heart. The wind! Rayek, be careful! What a... I know the rocks. They are my second home. Go live in a tree, Wolf Rider. You were not made for life here in sorrow's end. Bayek! The wind howls like an angry wolf, sweeping in sudden, heavy gusts against the proud figure on the stone bridge, and only a tiny spur of rock, caught by the fingers of one wildly flailing hand, saves him from a swift death. His magic can't use it to float himself up! That power is lost! To all of us! Rayek! Oh, Rayek! No. No elf must die. Even if he's my enemy. Before he can think twice, Cutter crawls out onto the bridge, bringing a trembling hand toward Rayek's bloody fingers. And as Lita watches, a name that is not Rayx springs into her mind. A name she dares not yet voice. Tam.